G'day everyone. Uh, recently I just upgraded my computer to one of the M1 Mac Minis. Uh, I Before that I had a Mac Pro, it was a 2013 one that was fully specced uh, out and it was pretty good. Like, I mean, I'm amazed it's lasted me the amount of time that it has. The issue is though, it just stutters sometimes doing some 4K editing. It's dropping frames occasionally. So I thought I would have a look at the Mac Mini and see how it went. And, and it's surprising that it just really does do it like butter. It, it really is amazing how well uh, the Mac Mini performs in that area and in fact even things like Photoshop as well but let me just explain what I bought so I bought um, the uh, 8 core it's the new M1 uh, chip but I did get it with the 8 gigabytes of unified memory now I did buy also the 512 gigabyte SSD because I wanted to get enough room uh, to put apps on and things like that. Um, so I thought I'd try the eight gigabyte one just to see how it went. Uh, the If you want to go up to the 16 gigabyte, it is $200 extra. Um, so that's something that you can consider. Now that is what I'm recommending to do and I'm gonna explain why, uh, because there's some issues with the eight gigabytes that I'll discuss um, shortly. Now that's US, um, $200 if you want to upgrade. It's $300 if you're in Australia to upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of memory. So it's not cheap, but it's definitely worth it. Now, there's a couple of things that um, I've noticed using it over the last few days about what's happening with the eight gigabytes. Now I have to say the performance is absolutely outstanding. And I don't think uh, that the 16 gigabytes is going to make any difference with the performance. And there's a reason why I'm saying that is because what happens is when it starts to use up all of the RAM, it then goes on to the swap file. Now it's using the SSD for that swap file. And the SSD in these machine uh, machines is absolutely nuts. It is that fast. It's incredible. So you don't notice any drop in performance when your RAM is all used up. Uh, but there's other issues that I'll talk about shortly. Now, let me explain what I've got open at the moment. So let me just go over to here. Oh, before I do that, I'll just show you what I've got, I've got open. So at the moment, I've really, the main thing that's being used is Wirecast that I'm using to record this. And then I've also got um, Final Cut open uh, that you can see here as well. Uh, and like I said, I've been amazed at how beautiful this works. Uh, it, it really is amazing. There's just some issues that I'll talk about later on with plugins and things like that that have to be updated to the Silicon Macs. Um, but apart from that, I, it's just outstanding. It really plays like butter. Um, but let me show you what sort of RAM and things like that that's being used on this machine and what's open at the moment. So I'll switch over to here. Uh, and you can see at, if I go into memory, uh, the apps that I've got open at the moment are Safari, Wirecast, there's Final Cut Pro, Creative Cloud is just loaded because I use the Adobe apps, uh, and Windows Server is loaded as well. Now, the thing is too here that if you look at my memory usage, I'm actually using 5.78 gigabyte of memory. So it's not maxing out the RAM, but I have maxed out the RAM before, depending on what's open. That Final Cut document that I showed you a minute ago only had uh, one track in it. So it's basically just got the one file that you can sort of see here that's in it. So I haven't loaded anything. There's not multiple clips in, transitions and things like that. Um, but if you look at my memory usage at the moment, like I said, it's using 5.78 gigabytes. If I go to memory usage over here, you'll notice that it's using uh, this amount of RAM for each app that's, that's open. So it will tell you what's sort of being used at the moment. But the issue is, is that it's using 792 megabytes of swap memory, and it's sort of reserved two gigabytes there. But that's the problem. Um, so what's happening here is that it's using the SSD for the swap file more than what I would like. And that's with hardly anything being used uh, at the moment in Final Cut or whatever I'm gonna use. The second I start to really push this, it's gonna fill up the eight gigabytes of RAM and then it's gonna be using the SSD extensively. Now, the problem with that is that these SSDs are built into the main board. Now, it's not like a hard drive or, or older systems that you could just pull that out and replace it if it failed because they do have a, a time limit on the amount of times that they can be written to these SSDs. So that's a problem. So if it's constantly accessing the swap file, the SSD is not gonna probably last that long. 
So that's an issue. And the problem is it would then become a piece of junk because you would basically have to replace the whole thing. So what I'm suggesting to you is that you get the 16 gigabyte version, which gives you much more room uh, for your memory and, and applications to use it without sort of going to your swap file. And that's the reason why I'm sending my eight uh, gigabyte unit back and I'm purchasing the 16 gigabyte. Uh, I can do up, I can return it up to January the 9th. So I have ordered the 16 gigabyte one. It's gonna take two to three weeks to come. But I just wanted to warn people prior that you are going to come across this. Yes, the performance is probably gonna be exactly the same. I don't expect the performance of the 16 gigabyte one to be any better because the SSD and the swap file is so fast, I don't think it's going to affect performance at all. What it will affect is how long the SSD lasts in these in these computers. So it's something to think about. If you have any questions about that, please leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you all in the next video. I will be back live this week. I've had a bit of a break. Uh, so I'll see you all then. Uh, apart from that, bye for now.